Firstly, you begin by preparing the ground for a ground sheet. When the ground sheet is down, mark out your decking area and where the posts should be placed. If any steps are to be installed, these will need to be factored in at this point. Make sure you consider the board dimensions when doing so, as this will make the installation easier further down the line. If the installation is for a domestic property, then we advise having a maximum of 1500mm gap between the centres of the posts. For commercial settings, this gap should be reduced to 1000mm. Cut the ground sheet on the marked area. Proceed to dig the holes to house the upright posts, which will support the deck. The posts should be two-thirds above ground and one-third or a depth of 400 millimeters in the ground, whichever is greatest. At this point, you could choose to add concrete to secure the posts in place. They'll need supporting in position whilst the concrete sets. Alternatively, you could support the posts in place to allow continual work on the deck frame and apply the concrete at a later stage. This would be typical of an elevated deck over 600 millimeters in height. To stop the PLASPRO post from sliding out of the concrete, screws can be applied to the four sides of the base of the post to create a hole in the concrete. PLASPRO can be cut using a normal chop saw, preferably with a TCT blade that has fewer teeth. When cutting, it's advised to wear safety glasses and ear defenders. When working with PLASPRO, it's important to drill through the first product with an 8mm drill bit to allow for potential movement. In colder weather, it may be necessary to pilot drill the item being fixed to with a 5mm drill bit. If the head of the screw is to be submerged, for example when fixing a fascia board over the screw, use an appropriate size flat drill bit, such as 15 to 22mm, to submerge the screw head. The outer edge of PLASPRO is its strongest point. So when fixing the product, ensure you drill the holes 10 to 12 millimeters away from the edge. If the decking is adjacent to a wall, the first product to install is the PLASPRO 125 by 50 millimeter that is connected to the building as a ledger, packed 10 millimeters from the wall to allow for drainage. Continue to fix PLASPRO 125 by 50 millimeters as bearers to the side of the posts, parallel to and at the same height as the ledger. On the outer deck posts, the bearers should be fixed to the inside of the posts, with a gap of 125 millimeters above the bearer. This is to support the joists across the top. Where two bearers meet on a post, a 10 millimeter gap needs to be left to allow for potential movement. When a joist is not long enough to reach from one end of the deck to another, a double bearer must be used to aid the installation of a gap between joist ends. The first joists to be fixed are the outer joists perpendicular to the bearers, with the base of the joist level with the top of the bearer. Now that the deck frame is held square and parallel, this is the point to fill the post holes with concrete. Install the joists on top of the bearers by screwing diagonally through the joists into the bearer. Again, where two joists meet above a double bearer, a 10mm gap needs to be left to allow for potential movement. For installation on a domestic property, then we advise having a 400mm gap between the centres of the joists. For commercial settings, this gap should be reduced to 300mm. Complete the frame by adding the final outer joists to the posts, parallel with the bearers, fixed to both the posts and the ends of the joists to support a fascia board. If you're planning to frame your deck with a board or bullnose board, then consideration needs to be taken to support the back of the board, such as an additional joist. For further stiffening on large deck areas and commercial settings, a row of noggins should be added between joists at every one-third along the joist. The steps are built by constructing an outer frame first and inserting joists along at the appropriate intervals. These frames are then attached to the posts in the ground. The weight of these frames can be heavy, so it may be worth having someone assist at this point. When the joists are fixed and complete, it's best to consider if there'll be any lighting used in the design at this stage. 
now's the time to install the wiring and clip it to the joists so that there are no trailing wires. Now that you've completed your subframe, watch our installation guide on fitting your millboard decking.